Welcome, everybody, to a special edition of Stack Sats of Die Trying, right? This is episode 6.1. I know episode 6 dropped yesterday, um, and we do drop every Monday, but this is a special edition. I'm going to tell you why in a second. Um, episode 6 was a dope show where we talked about the idea of shit coins and why you got to be careful shit coining. And I shared a story about my brother Jabbar, man, who gave me a call last week and, and, and was telling me about some of his uh, shit coining stories. And, you know, so what I wanted to do was, get bar on here to talk about shit coining so without further ado i got my brother bar bar what's up with you good brother oh man listen i'm you know the founder of shit coins and you know <laughs> i, I should have listened to the stack to die trying <laughs> no, 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 so listen though here's what i want to preface this before i ask you a couple questions and i did say this in the last episode bar is a very intelligent brother he's one of the most successful guys in real estate in our city of philadelphia he's also ran a multi-million dollar business before so this is someone who knows how to put money to work, who knows how to get to the dollar. Um, but like most people, you know, I, I, I went through the shit coining phase when I first got into the crypto space, so I understand. But like most people, um, but it's just been hard to get bar out of shit coining, right? So, <laughs> so let me ask you this question, though. How did you first get introduced into crypto in general before all this shit coining? So probably when they started Bitcoin, 2000, it had to be like 2012. That you got first introduced. So I got, I was in, I was looking at, a, at, um, I was on uh, Facebook and someone said, Hey, just something called BTC or Bitcoin. And I mm -hmm. was like, what is that? So I had a computer and the guy was like, look, just go on the computer, leave your computer running and it'll give you, um, some Bitcoin. And then they had like the, um, the Silk Road and he sent me over to the Silk Road and was like, yo, this is where people have been buying stuff at the Silk Road. If y'all know what that is, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, what is it? And I think it was around. I want to say Bitcoin was around maybe 10 cents at the time, not even 10 cents, maybe about five cents. And it didn't even go past, like it was going between a penny, below a penny and above five cents. Like it had a, a like, I'm like, I couldn't, it was zeros before the dot. So it was dot zero one or something. And I'm like, yeah. well, and this is like 2014 or 2012, 2012. Then 2014 came around and it was like, 25 cents or something like that and the guy's like yo jabbar you should get it one coin the guy who started one coin he hit oh, me up was another scam. he hit me up and was like yo you should get these one coins and the whole time he's like you got to go through this process but the process is so like i couldn't just give him my credit card so at that point i was like well i can't i can't, can't give you my credit card then what's the point like there was no um yeah. um cash app there was no zell like you know what i mean i was like well how am i gonna get you he's like go to uh walmart and then you're going to wire me the money or you're going to give me the money. And I was like, wait, what? He's like, but just put 500 in. And I was like, nah. I said, if I can't put my credit card on this thing or or give you these numbers, I don't want to deal with it because mm -hmm. I don't want somebody to scam. Because, you know, at that time, people were talking about credit card scams. Everybody was doing credit card scams. Yeah, yeah. So and then how I really got back into it, Bitcoin Rodney had hit me up and was like, yo, you should come to this event. And I was like, what event? We're going to talk about Bitcoin. Now I'm looking at it and it's twenty five dollars. And I'm like. That thing that was less than a penny, because at the time I didn't know what le how something could be less than a penny. And I was like, it's twenty five dollars. And I kept thinking, like, oh, my God, like I should have <laughs> bought it when it was twenty five cents or yeah. less than a penny. But it was no access points. Mm -hmm. And at the time, no one was selling anything with Bitcoin. You couldn't do anything with it. But he was like, oh, it was 20, it's it's twenty five dollars now. You should get in. So then I'm like, All right, I'm going to get in. And this is when. um. Uh, what's the company name? Um, USI, USI Tech. Uh, the network marketing company. Yeah, so USI Tech was talking about it and was like, look, and they start showing you the map of how it was 25 cents. Now I'm like, fuck it, I'm in. So I'm buying mm -hmm. Bitcoin. Um, I put in, oh man, I probably put in a thousand or two thousand dollars at this point, mm -hmm. put the two thousand hours in, and they were giving you some five or six percent return every day. And I'm like, cool. And I started getting other people in, Nehemiah, like. I'm like, yo, you got to buy Bitcoin. And now Bitcoin went from $25 to around 50. And from 50 to it, it would jump to 100, drop back down. And the whole time mm -hmm. I'm getting more and more Bitcoin. And I'm not seeing the power of it, but I'm telling people, I start telling people in 2017, like, yo, we got to get in Bitcoin, got to get in Bitcoin. And yeah. the whole time I had bought Vaughn, Tron, I bought Tron, I bought um, some other coin that was supposed to be banked. XRP, XRP used to be 0. 0.0005 when I was buying so, XRP. The thing is, hearing you tell this part of your story, right, 
it, it, it explains why, because this, and this is what happens to everybody, is they think about where Bitcoin came from, right? And they feel like they missed out on a boat. So then they go chasing the other things that are less than, you know, a penny or whatever it may be, because you saw this happen with Bitcoin, right? So by you seeing this happen with Bitcoin, you're like, I'm not missing the next one, right? And that's what happens. That, that's what happens to most people. They don't want to miss the next Bitcoin, um, which is why I tell everybody the most important thing to do when you start to accumulate sats or get into space is to study. Because when you study, you realize, right? So the same way that it went from a penny to 25 cents, you're like, damn, then 25 cents, $25. You're like, oh, you know what I mean? Now we're at over $60,000, right? But here's the, here's the thing. When we hit three hundred thousand dollars, people will be sitting back like, "Yo, I remember that thing was sixty thousand, right?" <laughs> and, 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 and that's the difference between Bitcoin and everything else because Bitcoin is going to outlast everything else, right? So you'll have other th- other things that pump and do what they do, um, but the value proposition is just different. But hearing this part of your story kind of makes sense as to why you became king shitcoiner, right? Um, <laughs> Listen, everyone <laughs> sent me. And here's the thing that, so what other thing people don't realize is back then, remember people would say, it's going to go to a dollar. Whatever coin it came out, they said, listen, everyone's getting in before everyone knows about this. So you guys are getting in at a special price at 25 cents. So we're going to get you all in at 25 cents. We're going to launch it. And when it launches, we're going to put it out to the world at a dollar. So yeah. you're you're buying these shit coins with this theory, theory like, Oh, it's gonna go to a dollar. It's gonna go to there was a um I'm glad, I, 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 you, said, I'm glad you said that out your mouth because I said that in the last episode. I said everybody has this thing, it's the unit, it's the unit bias. Everybody has it's gonna get to a penny, or it's gonna get to five cents, or the, the, the magic one is once it gets to a dollar, you know. And I shared what you sent me, but you know, um the, the one that took me out though was like smooth love potion. Like you bought something called smooth love potion, you were out of pocket. If anything else can happen, smooth love potion was going, baby. <laughs> Somebody's buying some smooth love potion. You are out of pocket, right? So <laughs> some of those coins, bro, you had over a billion of them. Yeah, a Emacs, Emacs that came from listen, and what people don't realize if you checked how many times I was putting 500, a thousand hours in that drone, like, all right, look, I'm gonna buy 500 of it. And it wasn't like I was spending money like crazy. It was like every time I got paid, I'd take 10%. So I always tell yeah. people, like, the best thing you can do, I got allergies, but is I would say I got a 5,000 hour check. I take 500. 10,000 mm-hmm. hour check. I take 1,000 hours. I got 1,000 mm-hmm. hour check. I take 100. Like, I got Shiba Inu. I got millions of Shiba Inu. And I remember when um, AJ was telling me how he bought Shiba Inu before it became really a big thing for like 800 bucks. And that $800 mm-hmm. in Shiba Inu would be a couple million dollars today. But he bought yeah. it and sold it because it went to $1,100 and he got nervous. He's yeah. like, well, I made $1,100 and he sold. And here's the problem with all these shit coins. It's literally, you see them pump before they make an announcement and they go up and you're like, I got to buy more. So you buy more. They make the announcement, it jumps and you're holding on like, man, I put 500 in, now it's 650. And you're like, imagine if you add a couple zeros to this. Yeah, it's a mental thing, right? So this used to, and I told you this other day when we talked, I said, be, so I used to have my securities license and I would talk to people about stocks every day. And what was interesting about it was this, this is the same way people treated the, um, the, the penny stocks. They would gather up a bunch of penny stocks of worthless companies. Uh, I'm going to tell a quick story, right? Because again, everything I talk about is through experience. I did it too. There was a company, it was called the Hip Hop Soda Shop. Uh, H3 Inc. was the company. And they had a uh, Benjamin Chavis and a bunch of like uh, celebrity endorsers of it. It was like a Dave and Buster's, but with a hip hop theme. Like they had like uh, the Biggie Small Shake and like the Tupac Fries and all this kind of stuff. And they had a, a great idea. They had locations, and it was a penny stock. I think I might have owned like a hundred million shares of this company, bro. <laughs> it was next to nothing, but it was like twenty cent, ten cent, something like that. And they had the location. I saw it. Everything was supposed to come. They were developing and all that, and management ran the company to the ground it became worthless right so that was the last time i ever forayed into like the penny stocks and when i say penny by definition a penny stock was anything less than five dollars but i'm talking about i was in the ones that were actual pennies so i guess from coming from that then seeing this it was easy for me to get get out of the whole shit coin space because the same amount of thousands of dollars that i spent on that penny stock i could have bought apple i could have bought microsoft you know what I mean? Like I could have bought these companies that were around at that point right. that are still around and are still oh, dominating. Listen, I was Especially originally, I'm originally from Google. Listen, I'm originally from Google, Netflix. 
want a quick story? Netflix came out. There was next Le- Netflix Gold Entertainment. Gold Entertainment when they first start um, shipping um, DVDs uh, CDs in the mail, DVDs in the mail. Yeah. There's a company called Gold Entertainment. They're like, look, we're gonna go mm-hmm. public. So Gold Entertainment came public, and they wanted, uh, I want to say either twenty five dollars a share or twenty five cents a share. I can't remember. It might have been twenty five cents a share. I mm-hmm. said Gold Entertainment going to take off. His name is Gold Entertainment. They're charging twenty nine dollars a month. For you to get your uh, DVDs in the mail to play your PlayStations, yeah. And I, I was like, man, I'm on, a, I'm on the inside, I'm on the inside, I'm on the inside. It was it twenty? No, it was twenty five cents. It was twenty five cents. I said, let me put a little five hundred dollars in this. Now Netflix came out, and I said, Netflix, what the hell is a Netflix? Nobody's gonna buy Netflix. Gold Entertainment. Everybody gonna go Gold Entertainment. Uh, you picked the wrong horse. Listen, I went to um, Stock Trader or Scotland Trade. Where you can do your own stuff, you don't have to pay anybody. Oh, Scott Scott Scott, Scott, Scott. Yep, and in some Jenkin Towns, right in Jenkin Town. Yeah, I used to be a bro- I used to uh, use their brokers too. I went to the one in Center City. There's one in Jenkin Town on All York Road, and there's one in Center City. And so I, I came in here with my my money order. I gave them my five hundred dollars. They gave me my shares of Gold Entertainment. I was like, Yo, <laughs> yo, see, you old head like me because I, I tell people this and they think I'm joking. I used to have to go down to Center City. It was like seventeenth and like JFK. And it was a Scott trade. You had to take him a check and mm-hmm. give him the check. Like you, you couldn't go online and just do it yourself at that point. You had to like literally drop off money and um to be able to participate in the market. So as a side note, this is why a lot of people now don't realize how good they have it, where you can open your phone and you can be investing in companies within minutes. Like it wasn't always that way. Um, but getting back to the story though, the idea of like this whole shit coinery. So um here's my here's my question, right? Because you know, I'm gonna be here all day, but I definitely want to hear from you. What are you going to do from this point? Are you still going to be shitcoining, bro? Listen, it's an addiction. It is really like I'm not buying anymore because every time I get a phone call or someone tells me like it was crazy because I tell people I was online before a lot of people. So I was a part of every network marketing company, at least 20 some network marketing company. You do. And I would this is the thing I tell people. I was giving away Bitcoin to buy shit coins. So and that's the, other so part that's the process. About. You told me this the other day. You said you said the amount of Bitcoin and Ethereum you gave away to buy all these like billions and millions of dollars of all these other shit coins. You said this is what you were thinking about, like what you would have now. So crazy shit. Like it would be. All right. I remember one company. um, I want to say CFS. And it was like you gave them for the minimum you give them was two hundred dollars, two hundred fifty dollars worth of Bitcoin. So my whole point was always, okay. let me put a thousand hours in. If I got a thousand in, I'm cool. A thousand to two grand, I'm cool. So you put that money in, and I'm like, if it just goes up 10%, I'm good. And they're giving me a guaranteed 1% return or trading it, they're buying it. And then they'll be like, Yeah, give us your Bitcoin, and we're gonna give you this. And I was in all of them. And then when you go back to get the money back out, you can't. Because now they're like, Oh, who are you? And you're like, Well, I'm the guy who gave you my money. Now they're not on company, no one's responding to emails. You're trying to get your Bitcoin back mm-hmm. out or cash out their shit coin to get btc out and you start to realize there's nothing there's no um liquidity so i didn't even know right. so, so we, we we so so after a couple years in the space we started doing consultations just showing people how to get set up get into cold storage all these kind of things we do consults or whatever and i would talk to people who had kind of that same experience and one of the things that i realized is i would tell them like well what's the volume on the token that you you know you because everybody doesn't want Bitcoin. Everybody wants all the other stuff, right? And I would say, what's the volume on that? And they were like, what do you mean? And they go online. And I show them how to find a volume. And there's next to no volume. I said, so, yeah, who are you selling this to? There's no actual interest in your shit coin. So you kind of are stuck with it. It's not enough to buy something, whether it goes up or down. You have to have someone that to, to make it liquid, to make it so you can get your money out. There has to be a market for said token. And a lot of these shit coins aren't. And I'm glad you said everything you're saying is 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 is, is kind of like, you know, what I've said in the episode, and I know you haven't even seen the episode yet because we're recording this that night. The other one's already scheduled. I said, let me get Bar on to have this conversation. Um, but everything you're saying is what I said, right? Some of these pro- projects are set up with the explicit purpose of getting your Bitcoin, right? Even Ethereum. People don't remember when Ethereum first started. In order to get Ethereum, you had to, you couldn't give dollars for it. Oh, you, you had to trade. trade. When you Ethereum trade was your- um, a dollar. When it was a dollar or 75 cents. You had to trade your Bitcoin to get it. You had it. to trade your Bitcoin to get it. And that's what made me not like it. And I was like, ah, so I got um, Litecoin. 
I had got some. Um, well, that's the thing, though. When you think about it, a lot of these people who create these shit coins and these, these and this, these, you know, basically Ponzi schemes, they're doing it with the purpose of getting to your sats. People don't understand the value of sats now, but I think that and that's why I wanted to create this show independent of our regular podcast where I do nothing but talk about Bitcoin and sats because what I recognize is that unit bias is a huge problem. When I talk to people every day, they say, I can't afford a full Bitcoin. I'm like, don't think about the Bitcoin stack sats because eventually you'll have one over time. But if you don't start to stack sats now, it can, once you realize the value proposition, you're going to sit back like a lot of folks are because there's not one person I met that owns Bitcoin that doesn't regret not owning more. Oh my God. So once you, so once you figure it out, you say, damn. You know what I mean? Like, so even me, I tell the story of how I sold like m multiple Bitcoin to buy some property. And now in retrospect, those Bitcoins that I sold will be worth more than the actual property. I, I still own the real estate, but it, I would rather, I was much rather have the Bitcoin because then I don't have to hear my tenant's mouth. I don't got to deal with taxes. I don't got to fix toilets and I still have property. Right. And that's the thing. Once you understand Bitcoin is property and you know, the analogy I use um, is would you, if I told you right now, right now, that you can buy a piece of real estate in Manhattan for sixty-seven thousand dollars. Would you find it sixty-seven thousand dollars? I find it tomorrow. Not even listen. Half hour later, listen. Somebody okay. sent it to me. Bitcoin in twenty twenty-four is the equivalent of Manhattan real estate. Hundred yeah. years. Do you know that we used to? Uh, so it was a guy at uh when we did the first BTS, like maybe six years ago, mm -hmm. seven years ago. No, six. Say six years ago, uh, we were in Mike Mike's office, Holloway office, um, on a Holloway Holloway Realty. Up and mm -hmm. show, show him Avenue, was, right? Yep, I was there, and a guy came in the room, and he said, "Jabbar, I heard you talking about that Bitcoin." It was like 2017, 2017, 2015, something like that. And he's, I said, "Yeah." I said, what, "What's happening?" He said, "Man, I had a settlement, and he settled with some law firm right up there on um, not across the street from the um Sonogo gas station." And the guy said, "Look, young man, he had sold a house, made like twenty five thousand. He said you should buy this Bitcoin thing." And he said, "What?" And at that time, I think it was like a thousand dollars. He bought the goddamn Bitcoin for a thousand dollars. He got mm -hmm. a, a a wallet and put ten of them on there. He gave he sold he gave each one of his kids basically one Bitcoin or two Bitcoins, and then he said it dropped to like five hundred bucks. And he was like, "Oh man," because he was like he thought he lost out. And the guy said, "Buy more." So he bought twenty nine more Bitcoin. <laughs> Do you know that that guy would say, "Bar," when it went to twelve thousand, I sold my Bitcoin. Because at that point it was going, it was jumping. Like it went from like five thousand, two thousand dollars. That was, kind of, that was kind of my experience too. That's how I did too. But see, that's because I also, to be completely transparent and honest, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what I had. And so, it went to twenty grand. He sold at twelve yeah. and twenty. And then he's complaining to me like, "Yo, bar, but I bought houses with it." I said, "All right, cool." But I was like, "I said, what if it goes to forty or six? This is when they were talking about it going to 40. And that's the thing. Corey always, tells me that. Corey, Corey always tells me. Corey always tells me. Says, "Don't feel bad. You bought property with it." And I'm like, "Yeah, but right." So that's the thing. But my point, the point is, and you're saying the same thing that I'm saying is, there's no one who doesn't have that experience who doesn't wish that they had more. Um, and once you understand that, you know, it's literal property. It's property, right? So someone, uh, us, we're real estate guys. So when you start to talk about property, but property in a digital, uh, from a digital standpoint. It's a little bit different, man. So I got a whole. No one taught us, but it was I got to tell people I'm the founder of all this shit because no one taught us you could borrow against it. You know what I mean? Like no one was teaching, hey, you could borrow yeah, against yeah, this, yeah, and if you yeah. borrow against it, you can keep the asset, and, and as still, long as it still, still, yeah. mm -hmm. you'll be all right. Mm -hmm. Because when he was selling the Bitcoin, I was like, oh, that's smart. He said, man, I bought him for a thousand, so I sold him at twenty grand. Yeah. So he bought. He bought. Um. I want to think he bought two cribs with it, um, or three, each for one daughter or one kid he had. And so he was I, 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 well, that's the thing, right? It all depends upon your perspective, because you know, if he's happy with that, it's cool. But you know, and that's the thing, right? So Bar is one of the more welcome. I, I think you're the, you're the greatest networker there is. I always tell you that's your super yeah. forget everything else you do, your your superpower is networking, right? So because of Bar, I've been able to, you know, um meet and speak with people who are billionaires, multimillionaires, right? So bar is my connect, and I meet everybody through bar, right? And you know, I told a story where you, you had, I'm not going to put, put the guy's name out there, but you put me on the phone with a billionaire like recently. And he was asking me about Bitcoin. And I asked him, I said, what's the interest? And his response was BlackRock's in. 
Oh, he that, you know he spent a million dollars. He did. He put a million in BlackRock at, at Bitcoin at sixty one. Okay, see, I, I didn't even know that. After, I didn't That's know why when you talk to him, him you're you yeah. were the reason he put the million dollars in to BlackRock ETF. Oh, wow. Then he explained it to me. He said when I because he tried to buy it through his phone through mm -hmm. Coinbase and they denied it at two hundred fifty mm -hmm. grand. And I was just like, no one's pushing two hundred fifty grand to their fucking phone to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> If I'm your bank, I'm going, what the hell are you yeah. doing? So, so it's funny. Uh, what I want to say is that conversation, he said something to me that, you know, it stuck with me. And when, what he said was, um, and this is, you know, former bank exec and all that. He said, I said, what makes the, what makes you have the sudden interest in Bitcoin? He said one word. He said BlackRock. He said once BlackRock gets in, I look at everything different. He said BlackRock is like an extension of the government. So once they're in, I know it can never hit zero again. And I mean, from that conversation, it hit me too. Like, I'm not bullish enough. <laughs> as Listen, bullish as I am, I should be more bullish because of that. I mean, this is a guy who's already, you know, already. They, they BlackRock did reports, reports. Like he said, yeah. Jabbar, we're not talking about how you, a, a smart genius, writes a report. He's like, BlackRock writes, they have 20 people locked in a room and they do a PDF that's 300 pages about what they feel about uh, Bitcoin. Mm hmm. He's like, so my million dollars will turn into $3 million, whether it turns into $3 million this year, next year, three years from year now. But what am I going to put a million dollars in that's going to turn to $3 million? Yeah. So, I mean, I just wanted to bring that up because, you know, again, that, that's your superpower network. And that conversation made me realize, yo, I need to be more bullish. Because once he explained the significance of BlackRock being in this space, I was like, okay. And then I realized that most people don't even understand this. Oh, and like, he, I talked to him the other day. He said, Jabbar, let me explain something to you. He said, how many people can, how, what's, uh, how many people are, how many licenses did it issue to the, to have the Bitcoin? He's like, there's 11. He's like, so 11 people can sell Bitcoin legally mm -hmm. with no oh, issue with the government, right? Yeah, yeah. He said, how many brokerages do you think there is in Oklahoma? I was mm -hmm. like, I don't know. 80? Yeah. It's like 252. Mm -hmm. And he said the number, whether it's right or wrong, but he said the number. He said, how many you think is in New York? A couple yeah. thousand? So, yeah. So There's only the 11 people, 11 companies that can buy and sell the, B the Bitcoin ETF or whatever, right? And he's like, guess what happens when more people get licensed on it? They're just telling the people under BlackRock, and BlackRock's one of the largest. He's like, what yeah. if not BlackRock, whatever, the Black Point, whatever gets in. And he's like, what about all the other ones start? To yeah, push? Blackstone, Merrill Lynch. Blackstone, Charles Charles Merrill Lynch. Lynch. He's Charles going Star down the list. He said, now yeah. all the people that was pushing all the other bullshit, they're get, their companies get licensed. And he's like, it's like a, a big giant tugboat, a big ship, and behind the ship, all this wave flow is behind it. He said, mm -hmm. you're still in the beginning because you, don't, you didn't get an email about this. Now, if you're part of Blackstone, you got an email. But what about now Charles Schwab gets, sends you an email? What about everybody now? The church, the um, school, whatever the school they manage, one of the. Yeah, but this, but see, now you're making my point, right? So now, now are you hyping me up now? I, mean, I should be more bullish, right? Because <laughs> when he started explaining that, he said in the next two to three years, and this is very simple. When you take economics, the first thing they talk about in economics is supply and demand, right? So we go through a happening where they cut the amount of supply that exists. You already have all the ETFs buying up all the daily flow, but you don't even have all the companies in yet. Once they get in, it becomes even more scarce, and there's only one place for the price to go. Um, but again, once once the average person realizes that it's actual property and not just this thing that lives out in the world, that's when things change. And that's what separates Bitcoin from shit coins, taking it back to our conversation, is because a lot of these shit coins have unlimited supply, right? They don't have that hard oh, cap of 21 million, right? A lot of these shit coins have founders where you say, we're going to get on a call with the founder. That right there makes me walk the other way because I know that you're not decentralized and there's a pain point right there. A lot of these other coins have these um these 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 like uh, ICOs in which they give it all to their friends and everything. Like so, all these things are what make Bitcoin different. So it's Bitcoin and cryptocurrency are two different things. But getting back to your point about him saying all these people are coming into the space, he's right, and it absolutely changes things. But I also realize that a lot of people who were even in crypto don't understand the significance because they don't come from TradFi. When you know what black like what BlackRock means to traditional finance, you say, oh, they're a gorilla in the room. Like it's not 
This isn't, you know, mom and pop's bank. Here's something else I looked up after that conversation with him. A lot of those companies were trying to get approval for an ETF for a while. It wasn't until BlackRock put their, they pulled up to the table and now everybody's approved, right? So it's like they're, and out of all the approvals that they uh, sought to get in ETFs, and I think they put in like 300 and some odd approvals, they've only been denied one time in the history of their existence. So they're tied in in a way that other people aren't tied in. And that does something to the space that kind of like, I don't want to say legitimize it because to be completely honest with you, I don't care whether they came or not. But what I do know by them coming that now um, my time of stacking, I got to step up my game and literally stack corn every day. I just, I just got to. Like, it is what it is. Listen, man. listen, when he said that, he said, Bar, think about this. He said, if you came to um, a country, a, a piece of a country, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, like Mexico, you know, he's basically said Mexico. When you first came to Mexico, pesos, there's a billion pesos for this. And he's like, just think about it. The first person to settle Mexico came in and bought the land cheap, dirt cheap. The people mm -hmm. didn't know what they had. Then someone comes in and goes behind you and say, I know what you have. I'll give you double what you paid for it. And you're like, OK, great. Now, the person who paid double goes, someone comes behind him and buy, pay triple for what you paid for it. But now one person owns all of the available land in the space. Mm -hmm. And no matter what he paid for it, whether it was double, triple, 10 times, uh, 15 times X, or he uses X as the word, it doesn't matter because you cannot get more land in Mexico unless he sells it to you. So now he Man. can create the number. And guess what is going to happen when you come to BlackRock and say to BlackRock, hey, listen, I need some more Bitcoin. They're, oh, they're not making any more Bitcoin. Yes, and this is why I tell people, don't sell those folks your Bitcoin because they're going to push the price up. They're going to do all the heavy lifting for you. They're going to the control work. it. And guess what? The they're work. not caring about if they make, they're not trying to make a million dollars. He's like, BlackRock trying to make billions. He's like, they didn't Listen, get the space the to work, make millions. The work isn't waiting. All you have to do is sit there and be patient. The work isn't waiting. The work isn't going out and trying to do all this and do all that. The work is just chilling. That's the other thing about Bitcoin. Because you stack stats and you're not chasing everything else, go outside and enjoy life. Stack stats and enjoy life, man. Yeah, right, man, listen, I forgot, baby. Because listen, if I had put half of the money, we would not be having this conversation. You'd be like, I <laughs> see Bart. Oh, he's in Puerto Rico. You see, Bar, he's in Switzerland. <laughs> All right, Bar, but I know, I personally, I know someone who's just, sitting on. Will you just spend time stacking sats now? Will you leave the shit coins alone, man? I'm, just I a can't little bit. promise that. Listen, I can't promise that because it's like, it's like going to the strip club. Listen, it's like going to the strip club and, you're, and the, your favorite girl walks past and you're like, damn, she, she looked good, though. And you're dead like, yo, you got to go home. And you're like, yeah, I know, but you know what? Let me take $20 and listen, you can do <laughs> I respect you know, your honesty, man. I'm gonna I'm, I'm continue to work. Everybody watching this and listening, I'm going to continue to work. I'm trying to make Bar a full Bitcoiner. It's hard work because <laughs> he's like a like like Pookie and New Jack, man. I just be calling him and calling him, like Listen, you know. Because uh, you think about it, when, when are you ever going to own sixty seven billion dollars of anything? See, that's the other part too. People like looking at the hard large numbers, saying Listen. I own this. Yeah, but sixty seven billion dollars worth eighteen dollars and forty two cents. <laughs> That was, you know, much money I spent on that bitch to get it to that. Like I was like, all right, if I buy five hundred dollars, I get ten million. Okay, let me get ten million five hundred dollars. No, I got like a uh, hundred million. So I was like, all right, five hundred dollars. Then it was like, well, damn, it just went down. I could buy more if I buy a thousand of it, and now I got a, a billion dollars of it. So let me, let me put a thousand dollars in so I can get a billion. You are several thousand dollars into shit coinery. Right. Oh my but gosh, way more than that. that. You're not even military about... finance got me good though. That was the one that oh, got, got me best because yeah. it was two, three military guys, and they said, Listen, you buy military finance, and we're gonna run it like Bitcoin. There's only gonna be this amount of supply of it, and we're gonna take the money and um help support veterans. And they wrote a veteran a check for like twenty five thousand dollars, and they're like, This money's going here. So all I can I said, out of everything I got, if I got military finance. I'm good because there's three military guys. They're going to run it right. They're going to make sure it's so cool. Here's the thing. You have hundreds of millions of military finance. I looked at it. One million. I looked at it. It's literally worth $0. Zero it's so dollars. Zero dollars. It's so low. It's not even worth a penny for over 100 million tokens. All right, man. Listen. And they had you the great. And I love the logo. Look, they had the shirts. 
the hats. They had the stick on stickers. I said they running. They they know what they're doing. This guy didn't kill people in Iraq. This guy killed people in Vietnam. <laughs> they killed, yo, I said there ain't no way this ain't going to hit. They no, they even had they shit on a race car. They had military finance and a NAS a NASCAR race car on the hood. But see, that's a, this is my this is my um last point I want to make. That's the problem. All of these things are tech companies parading to be cryptocurrencies, right? So anytime you're advertising Bitcoin, and that's the other thing. Everybody I talk to about Bitcoin has a story of family, friend, acquaintance, somebody they work with that introduced them to it. No one, for the most part, can ever say that they learned from the founder of the company or they had a presentation from the founder of the company. Because Bitcoin is property and you have the people that own it and understand the value of it kind of evangelizing it for them. You're never going to meet the founder of the company. There is no Bitcoin meeting. There is no CEO. I'm about to have Bitcoin there, meetings, man. And tell there is no listen. advertising on a, a, on a NASCAR. All that stuff is unnecessary because it's not a company. It's a commodity. It's property. That's the difference. Anyway, Barman, thank you for coming on for Stack Satisfied Train. Appreciate you, bro. We're going to have you back. We're going to talk about some Bitcoin in the future. You know you always come on our Friday show and all that. So um, where can the people uh, you know, follow you with your real estate deals and everything you got going on in business? Um, Jabbar Fairweather, you can Google me. Listen, I got TV shows, video shows, all kinds of stuff on YouTube. That's and- how you man. My man didn't tell you to go to a site. He said just Google Jabbar Fairweather. That's so- it. Just Google Jabbar Fairweather. I'll pop up somewhere. And- yeah, man. All right, man. Listen, bro. Appreciate, appreciate you as always. I listen. I want to thank you for your transparency and for you sharing those screenshots and you know also coming on and had a conversation. You know after that one aired, man. So I got to share the wins and losses. You know what I mean? Like Absolutely. that's the thing I and think everybody it, gets. Man. And you for everybody feel- listening, man. I'm- you do better. Eventually, we're gonna make bar a full Bitcoin. We will make we're gonna bring Bitcoin Bitcoin bar back. I used to call you that Bitcoin bar. We're gonna bring Yo, I got back. a shirt that says Bitcoin bar on it. Yeah, that works. You, you gotta drop all the shit coins first, then you gotta drop this the smooth love portion first. Oh, all right, yeah, listen, I, I'm gonna have a shirt that says smooth lover. <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> you gotta get that up. <laughs> listen, man, as we always say, we get out of here, man. Stack sats or die trying, man. I'll see y'all um next Monday. We'll have another episode, but I appreciate y'all, man. Take it easy. Peace. Peace.